I'm just going to say how it is. It shouldn't work. That's right. We were over here trying to think of the best way to describe what experience we each had with this particular book. And I got to say, this is an amazing comic book and it's just another comic. It's no surprise. It's by AWA Upshot. And I don't know if they've ever made, I'm sure they have, you know, something I wouldn't care for, but I feel like it's every single comic I get from AWA. I'm like thoroughly enjoying. We're talking about Crimson, Crimson. We're talking about Crimson Cage comic fam. I love this publisher. I have gone on record on this channel and several others multiple times. Uh, they've been around for two years. They just had their two year anniversary like a couple weeks ago. Actually. So crazy how new they are. And they've done about 30 titles and I have now read all of them. I've gone through and read everything they've done. And you're right. There's some that aren't as good and it's based on personal preference. I think even the ones I don't like are still pretty good. This one is still going. Uh, it's on issue four out of five right now, and it is easily in my top ten somewhere. Writer John Lees, artist Alex Cormack, and this is written by the same writer on a book that we praised on this channel months ago. Yes, this is the same writer as Hotel, from also from AWA, a great horror anthology book. However, I think I like Crimson Cage a little more. Oh, um, me too. Okay. Absolutely. No, a hotel was fun because it's like, it's an anthology all set in a horror anthology set in the place of a hotel and different rooms. Right. And they're wild. You can read each one right. as like a one shot. It's like an ice cream man vibes to a degree. Crimson cage. This is why this shouldn't make sense, but it's, but it does like, like it doesn't make sense that it's so good. You have pro wrestling, right? 80s pro wrestling, 80s, which is a very, which is very important. Yes. This is like, this is pre WWE. This is like old school Hulk wrestling Hogan kind of wrestling. Yeah. Like, like, like they're, you have to like really fight to get to the top. No pun intended. Like it's sure. this is a tough, tough industry to make it in arguably more then than now, which is, it's a very difficult industry to make it in now too. So yeah, pro wrestling, you have horror and you have Shakespeare Macbeth. And that's or what I said. You. Or do, do or do you? <laughs> it is Macbeth mixed with wrestling, which should not work. Period. But then you add like, not just because even Macbeth, it wasn't necessarily Macbeth is a horror. Scary book. It's 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 a scary story. It's angsty. Yeah. It's not. I mean, obviously, it's Shakespeare. It's not grotesque. It's no, not this like book definitely adds some gore, which you can see here just on the cover alone. There's there's some gore elements in this comic, but. Yeah, Shakespeare didn't necessarily get into that aspect of it, but they're there. It's a book about a guy who kills the king and wants to become the king and plots and schemes and there's witches and spooky scenes. Macbeth is, is, a, is a tale of, you know, it's kind of like selling your soul to the devil, you know? It's when did like, you read it last? High school. It's like one of the few Shakespeare I stuff I read. In high school, so I was like 15. Like I really had to read it. Like that and Romeo and Juliet. They and stuff made like me that. read it. Like I didn't want to. Like that's the problem with high school, man. I was 15 years old. I'm not going to want to read Shakespeare. I but would like to read this book again and go back to it as an adult. Probably can. Yeah, but you know, they like, it takes months to go through this stuff in class and they, they hammer it in. They I mean, you learn it. suck out all the fun you could possibly have from, from reading anything <laughs> in school, which is like not how it should be. My, my, uh, my, my high school would make us write out like notes for every chapter and it got so terrible. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm basically rewriting the, the book by hand. Like, why am I doing this? But anyways, uh, Macbeth, from what I remember it, it's been a long time. The, this tale of someone who is told that their future could be something that they really want. And if they strive for that and, and lean into the bad decisions that you'll have to take to get there, you will reach these goals. But it's like those goals at what cost? And Violence, short lived, death. which is an important part too. You will get to the top, but very soon after, something bad will happen, and, and you, you won't have all your fingers. You know, sure. it's, it's gonna it's gonna be some some problems on the way, and by the end of it, you may regret that you even did it in the first place. Right, and it's a it's a classic like story that Shakespeare really kind of na nailed, honestly, way back in the day, and they have they have made different versions of this over the years that I really like. I love Throne of Blood, the Japanese movie from like the fifties and sixties. I, I should remember exactly when. I think it's the fifties by Kurosawa. It's a great great adaptation of Macbeth. I think Crimson Cage deserves to be in that same category. So we have pro wrestling, a, a gentleman and his significant other who are really just trying to make it. 
They're trying to become famous to the level of a Hulk Hogan. You they're know, pretty, someone. They're stuck in like Louisiana wrestling, which I imagine is not that great. Like local local wrestling trying to climb up the ladder and be nationally famous. So we're I'm showing you um, pictures right here of of wrestling on one end, and this is what you think of, right? 1984 wrestling, pro wrestling. You know, you have uh, our our lead character who's doing his best, Chuck Frenzy. Yeah, Chuck. That's right. What Chuck a cool Frenzy. name. Like, I, lo- a cool I love name. that. That's such a good wrestling name. And look at he's he's cutting his forehead with the razor blade so he can get some blood. It is theatrics, right? You sure. know, it, it's well, it's still blood. You it's know? still it's not blood. Like fake anything. I mean, this is a uh, is entertainment right here. You know, yeah. but you actually start the comic off with this. This is straight up some like Ari Aster level yeah. witch types of characters. Yeah, like the classic story of Macbeth was the three witches in the forest, but this comic has transplanted that to three kind of like swamp witches in the Louisiana, in the bayou. That's right. So it, it matches the new environment that this story is in, but it's still very much the original witches in, you know, giving up, giving a horrifying prophecy. So their promise would come soon, but not before we learn about the struggles of our two main characters, um, you know, partners in wrestling here and doing what they can do to try to get to the top, to be so entertaining that they can get picked up by something larger, a bigger wrestling firm. You know, these are production companies and they're always recruiting. They're going in and out of different states to do their traveling, to, to try and televise. Find um, new talent. Find new talent, right? Yeah. And this is their shot. And they, they know that they're going to get a shot potentially, but they're running out of time. This isn't a, a field where you can do it forever. Sure. It's so brutal. They, it is uh, it's extremely brutal. And that's kind of what you see here. You see our, our lead characters, um, specifically Chuck. These are those same two wrestlers, but out of costume. Which and is like having a drink at a bar. And like, I remember thinking back to like the two weeks that I watched wrestling when I was like 12. You only watched wrestling for two weeks. I didn't care that much. I I, didn't, I got sucked into like the, the Rock and the Undertaker and, and like the early, the early 2000s. WWF kind of stuff. I was in it for a little while, and then I'm just like, I, I want to play video games. Apparently, WrestleMania is this weekend. We're, we're finding out from oh. uh, Mr. Noggin Comics. There you go. So I guess we timed this perfectly then. We sure did. And uh, I believe, is does Issue 5 come out this week? Ish, no, it's the new Hulk that comes out this oh, week. Oh, Hulk comes out this week. Yeah. But, this, but Issue 5 comes out soon, so this is wrapping up. End of week. April. So there's yeah. actually time. Yeah, get caught if up you, on if this If you want to get the, the, the to get all these before the final issue comes out. But I'm, I was thinking back to my wrestling days when I was little, and... When you're watching it, you see the performance, right? You're in, you're either in the room watching it on TV or you're in, if you're lucky, you're in the, you know, in the arena watching them do it in person sure. and you just see what they do on stage. But this comic does a really good job of showing you what it's like when they go back to the locker room or when they're at home or when they're at the bar talking to each other and like planning out their careers and their ambitions and their goals. And yeah, it's not WWE entertainment translated to a comic story. No, it's, it's an aspect's aspect of the job of the characters we follow. And we are actually following a narrative about the world outside of the ring, but the ring is what it's all about. Right. And especially in Chuck's case, he has heard this prophecy from these witches in the swamp here. Cause after they come out of that bar, the two of them stumble through this shortcut through the swamp, which is, sounds like a bad idea. I wouldn't have done that. And on this shortcut, they encounter these terrifying witches in the swamp who give them both this prophecy. And the prophecy it pretty much says, well, one of you guys, you're going to have a great career. You're going to be super famous. You're going to get everything you want. The other guy, you're not going to make it, but your kids are going to have a cool life. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, so it's like, which guy are you going to be? And yeah. right there, it's like the start of the poison. Yes. And this just seeps into Chuck's brain forever. And he can't unhear this. The art is outstanding in this comic book. So much detail. Um, I mean, look at this right here. This this one page, it, it you kind of get surprised to a degree about how dark it gets. You know, you go from the lights, the show floor, the 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 ring, the action, the Hulk Hogan s. But then you go to the Bayou and you're dealing with some like terrifying stuff. And this is the last page that I will actually show the community because okay. issue one is a great setup. Issue two, you go full horror. Grotesque, blood, and it's more akin to issue one's cover in the narrative than issue one is. 
That's a good way to put it. I like the way that the that Chuck he goes home and tells his wife what he heard, and they both kind of figure out a plan for what to do. That's right. And they're gonna go the Macbeth route. They're like, how exactly. can we forge our path, you know, so that we get what the witches say could be on the table. But at what cost, we're going to find out. And if you're familiar with Macbeth, then this story does a good enough job of following closely to the original source material. So you, if you know the story of Macbeth, you know how this Crimson Cage wraps up. But it's still so shocking and scary and, like, really, really, really good. It's really disturbing, comic fam. You got to check this book out. It's wild. You're going to have a blast doing reading it. It's one of those situations where it's like, oh, man, I just love the medium of comics so much because you can literally put any genre. I don't have to be familiar with it. I don't have to be a fan of it. I happen to have been into wrestling for a good amount of my childhood. Um, I actually have gone to multiple wrestling events when I was in high school. I haven't done it so much right now, but I have a big respect for it. I understand it. I understand what it's like to to really worry about the wrestlers and what they're doing for good reason. They're doing something super dangerous and it is entertaining as hell. But reading wrestling narratives, I'm, you know, I'm not reading wrestling books I or anything like that. I did not get this book just because I was like, oh, wrestling, pass. But then you think about something like Long Live Pro Wrestling, James sure. Hake, Scout Comics, outstanding comic book that isn't necessarily about the ring. It's about what happens outside the ring. And that's what comics do. They can they can introduce any genre to you, any type of story, something that you may not be familiar with, something you may not even enjoy or relate to, but it's because of how it's written and, and the situations and the character development, the relationships with between them. The horror sometimes, sometimes the the crime, and it gets so intriguing that all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I think the take best, me to uh, the best WrestleMania. Stuff. Let's do it. For me, anyway, I find the best stuff when I take a chance. Like, I almost did not grab Crimson Cage, but because it's AWA, because I have promised myself at this point that I'm just going to get whatever they make, I took a, a chance on it. And AWA did that for me. When I saw Crimson Cage was on our, our list that you suggested, and, I re and I'm like, all right, let me, let me find it out. You know, like I, the summary, adds my pull list. And I'm like, oh, but it says AWA. Publisher, Scout has done that for me. Not everything that Scout does is like my favorite comic book, but they're consistently great comics but every publisher has comics that i'm just like really not into there's always like some redeeming factor to a degree but awa has positioned themselves to be a must read every single time if something seems interesting it's gonna be one of the best comics i'm reading that week they had another book option too after chariot by the way old haunts starting the auction off at one dollar for one minute like we always do this is one of our favorite covers and you got it a bit of that, what y'all been looking for, right? A little bit of that, but what y'all been looking for, right? 